Today we're going to talk about the number one top multivitamin mineral product in the world. Okay. Now I'm not going to tell you the brand name because you can look this up online and find it very easily. But I just find this very, very interesting. Here we have the number one top selling multivitamin mineral. They make just under $200 million a year and it's all synthetic. They use mostly elemental minerals. Okay. Those are minerals that don't really absorb that well. They're very inexpensive and they are definitely not plant sources. Elemental minerals are usually in the soil. The plant grabs them, converts them to a different type of mineral that's easier to absorb in our bodies. So anytime you're using elemental minerals, you're using minerals that are more designed for plants than humans. And so if you're consuming an elemental mineral, the absorption of it is going to be a lot less, so you're not going to get very much of it in your body. Now, the same thing goes with synthetics. You're not going to absorb the same amount. Um, synthetics are not the same form that comes from nature. All right, let's start with the first ingredient, calcium carbonate. What you should know about the first ingredient of most products, it usually encompasses the, the majority of that product. So if they have calcium carbonate as the first ingredient, it's probably the majority uh, of this product. And this is why when you lift up the bottle of this supplement, it feels like a paperweight. It's very, very heavy because calcium carbonate is a rock. It does not get absorbed in your body very well. And um, I never recommend it. All right. Then we have magnesium oxide. That's an elemental mineral. Then we have ascorbic acid, which is a synthetic a vitamin C, but it's really just one part of the vitamin C complex and they make it from uh, sulfuric acid and uh, cornstarch. Yeah. Then you have DL-alpha-tocopherol acetate. This is a synthetic version of vitamin E. It's not the whole complex. It's just one part of the vitamin E complex. Then you have cyanocobalamin, which is the synthetic version of B12. Then you have thiamine mononitrate, the synthetic version of B1. Then you have zinc oxide, which out of all the zinc uh, forms, is the most insoluble form. So it's not going to absorb very well in your body compared to all these other forms. Now, there are many other ingredients of this product, but I didn't want to overwhelm you with more synthetics. But on top of these vitamins and minerals, I had to add these other ingredients. Cornstarch, modified cornstarch, maltodextrin, DHT, which is a preservative, polyethylene glycol, titanium oxide. Now, why in the world would they add titanium oxide? Titanium oxide is what they use in varnishes, paints, plastics, rubber. Well, they mainly use it as a whitener to take out the colors of these ingredients. So then they can add the artificial colorings in there. That would be the red two lake, red 40, yellow six lake to make it a certain color so it's standardized because they know that what's important to you is the color more than the ingredient. Now, the problem with titanium oxide is that there are two major organizations, IARC, that states that this is a possible carcinogen. And then you have another organization, the EFSA, said that it's not safe in food sources. Here you have a multivitamin product that is the top selling product but to me, it's not even a true multivitamin mineral. It's some artificial thing that's resembling a multivitamin mineral. So what does it tell me? It tells me that either advertising works or people do not know the difference between authentic ingredients and synthetic and artificial ingredients. And I think it's more of the latter simply because if someone really understood the difference, even if there was great advertising, people wouldn't buy it. Now, I am not biased of my products. That was sarcasm, but I want to show you something. Uh, just from this product right here, Keto Energy, uh, I want to show you where the uh, vitamin B2 comes from. The B2 comes from broccoli. The B3 comes from tomato. The vitamin B5 comes from shiitake mushrooms. So it actually comes from food. So the problem with vitamin manufacturing companies is that it's just expensive. In order to get uh, vitamin B1, for example, uh, from a food source, you have to have like 300 milligrams of a certain material to make one milligram of a natural vitamin, okay? That is the problem. It's the cost. 
and synthetic vitamins, and very few people know this, are 80% times less expensive than natural vitamins. Now let me show you another one right here, cruciferous product, okay? All right, we have organic freeze-dried beetroot, organic freeze-dried Brussels sprouts, organic freeze-dried collard green, organic freeze-dried garlic, and the list goes on and on and on. So the first is the cost of the actual vegetable, okay, it's because someone has to grow it. Then you have the form of the vegetable, which has a certain cost, freeze-dried. That's more expensive than um, another type of form. Then you have the cost of the quality, organic, which is a lot more expensive than the conventional. So what you need to know is that synthetic is not the same as from a food source, okay? It's, it's very different. In nature, vitamins come in uh, very different complexes. They don't come in individual fractions of vitamins. Vitamins from nature have no chemical residues. And so in summary, when you're buying a vitamin, always read the back of the label. Read not only the data on the supplement facts, but the actual ingredients too. And if you can't pronounce these words, then you pretty much know that they're synthetic. Let's talk about the best form of broccoli. Now, what is so special about broccoli? Well, it has a very interesting compound called sulforaphane. And sulforaphane has been heavily studied. It activates the NRF2 pathway in your body. Well, it will help you express over 200 different genes relating to producing more antioxidants, helping you with inflammation. It's a powerful anti-inflammatory, and it helps to turn poisons into harmless particles. And so it helps you detoxify certain things in the liver. But what I think is more interesting is its anti-cancer properties. In fact, John Hopkins University, or at least someone in that university, tried to get the patents on broccoli sprouts long ago until they found out you can't patent a sprout. So if they were trying to get patents, there must be something to these broccoli sprouts, which we're going to talk about. But sulforaphane helps to excrete carcinogens, things that can trigger cancer. So not only does it have anti-cancer properties, it helps get rid of those things that can cause cancer. It's also good for your cardiovascular system. So let's go ahead and compare raw broccoli to broccoli sprouts. And this is going to be based on the same uh, amounts, 100 grams. So in raw broccoli, we have sulforaphane being 44 to 171 milligrams. Now, if we compare that to broccoli sprouts, we have 1,153 milligrams. That's 10 times as much sulforaphane as in raw broccoli. You wouldn't necessarily have to keep making broccoli sprouts. You can get it in a powder as well. All right, now let's take a look at calcium. Calcium is 42 milligrams versus 78 milligrams. So it has twice as much calcium. And then vitamin A in raw broccoli has 567 international units versus 300 international units in broccoli sprouts. Then you have vitamin C, 89 milligrams versus 58 milligrams. Iron, 700 milligrams versus 720 milligrams. So if you want the benefits of sulforaphane, definitely do the broccoli sprouts. Now there's one more point I wanna bring up, absorption. Okay, so when you're consuming raw broccoli, you're getting about 19% absorption. As compared to the broccoli sprouts, you're getting 74% absorption. And because sulforaphane is a fat soluble compound, if you consume it with a meal, or with some olive oil or another fat, you can get even better absorption. Hey, before you go, if you're benefiting from any of my content, I would love to hear about your success story. Please share it in the link down below.